go to the actual place and see the actual customers and how they use the vehicle in their daily lives. And we did that for this vehicle, looking at some of our major uh, export destinations. Uh, we do go to Russia, we do go to the Middle East, uh, South America, Mexico, Canada. So we've got a lot of these different types of uh, situations and, and the way that people use their family SUVs. In this kind of study and studying our competitors, some of my young engineers came to me and said, hey, uh, some of our competitors have a mode switch, which is sand, snow, or mud. Uh, we have what we think is the best in class hardware. We've got this amazing engine, a really efficient transmission, and a super quick response time, uh, rear differential with torque vectoring. Pair that with a good software understanding, and we could probably do that mode switch better. So we targeted that and we achieved that. Uh, that means that we had to go create the idea, uh, generate some systems, and go verify them and test them in the actual locations. We went to the muddy roads of Russia, the sand dunes of Dubai, and some really exotic locations for snow like Minnesota. Uh, but we also can't just go to those locations to try out every setting. So we had to do th some things in the United States uh, by ourselves also. So a lot of our sand dune testing had to be done in Glamis, uh, Dunes, California, or Silver Lake, Michigan. So let me tell you a little bit more about the intelligent traction management. It's really a software setting um, thing that utilizes all of our hardware. Uh, there's a push of a button right on the center console. It looks like a little fine drawing of a SUV going over some bumpy roads. When you push that button, it cycles through normal, snow, uh, mud, and sand. Each one of those settings gives you a little animation graphic uh, feedback uh, to let you know what kind of conditions you're driving in. Uh, each one of those settings has a different purpose and they're tuning either your drive-by-wire setting, which is the response to the accelerator pedal, uh, your throttle response to the accelerator, accelerator pedal, or your all-wheel drive system about whether there's torque transferred to the rear or your transmission or your traction control system. So first let me describe the differences between a couple of these. Uh, this is a real thing that really helps uh, in the right situations. So in the case of snow, if you are on a slow a snow or low mute surface and you want to accelerate from a stop quickly into traffic, uh, in our current system, uh, you start to uh, accelerate and you're, you want to get out there so you're a little bit nervous, push on the gas, the front tires start to spin a little bit. Right as they start to spin, the system says, we've got to transfer some torque to the rear, you need four-wheel drive. At the same time, the traction control system says, hey, the front tires are spinning, I need to apply some brakes, and I need to have some engine cut. Uh, when you're doing that, right when you're transferring torque to the four-wheel drive to really get power, you're cutting back on your power a little bit. So there's a little bit of fighting, uh, but it doesn't cause a lot of delay. It's still incredibly safe and, and works. But when you try the snow button, what you get is this. Uh, you change the modulation of the accelerator pedal, so it takes a little bit more stroke to get throttle. But you control the slip a little better yourself and not immediately go into slip. At the same time, um, you're, we begin, from, because you push the snow button, it starts with torque in the rear. In the rear. It already starts in some full drive. So you've say, taken some of the torque out of the front and put it in the rear, and so you don't have tires breaking loose. And on the two-wheel drive uh, versions, it starts in second Again, to make it uh, reduce the amount of slip. What happens is if you have the same condition and you just try it with button on and first the button off, when the snow button's on, you just start going and you zip right out there and, and the, the effect is amazing. It, so it's really easy to use and the customer doesn't really have to think about it. It just works. You compare that to the sand mode, completely different kind of mode. So in the sand, the people in Dubai, they understand we want to go out in the dunes you have to lower your tire pressure. You, you can't go out there with your standard on-road tire pressure. And in the Honda system, when you lower the tire pressure, the TPMS system says there's something wrong and it locks on the VSA and your traction control. So when you push the sand button, what that allows is you can lower the tire, pr tire pressure and the TCS goes to a setting that allows slip. It allows you to spin your tires and keep paddling your way through the sand. You gotta maintain your momentum you gotta stay on the torque. You gotta have the torque right there and be aggressive and be able to go. So the drive-by wire setting is now much more aggressive. So as you throttle in, you get throttle right away. 
You do have the all-wheel drive already transferring torque to the rear because you want all the traction you can get. And the transmission holds the lower gears a little bit longer so you have the maximum amount of torque at the wheels and allows you to really power through uh, and drive through the sand. And again, we've confirmed these uh, on several different locations and feel like we have the best system out there. So I mentioned idle stop. Idle stop is a great way to get improved fuel economy, especially if you're in the city and come to a lot of uh, street lights. Now the thing is, about technology, it's only as good as people are willing to use it. So we understand that, really wanted to think about that. Idle stop is, is fantastic uh, if you come to accept it. The way it works is, um, if you're not familiar, you come to a stop and your foot's on the brake. After two seconds, the engine shuts itself off, and then you save all that fuel while you're sitting at the light. As soon as you put, take your foot off the brake or turn the steering wheel just a little bit, the engine fires up quickly and smoothly, and you're ready to drive away uh, with no hesitation. Um, if you are still not comfortable, comfortable with it, we do have an off switch right on the center console, so you can turn the system off. It's right there, so right after you start the car up, right after you shift or set uh, whatever reverse or drive, you can just push the button right then if you don't feel like you want to use it. So the way to get best in class fuel economy, uh, you have to start with the vehicle um, and uh, optimize the aerodynamics. When we were looking at this vehicle, this is a family vehicle, so when you think of cross-sectional area and coefficient of drag, we didn't really want to reduce the cross-sectional area because we want to passenger capacity, we want to give people everything they need uh, for their family space. So we focused on coefficient of drag. Uh, we do have a 40% scale wind tunnel in Ohio that we use to do clay model uh, uh, coefficient of drag analysis. We brought uh, Yellow Penguin there and worked together, uh, not just on optimizing the aerodynamics, but integrating into the styling so we could still achieve modern, style, uh, sleek, and premium styling and get the best uh, aerodynamics. Again, reducing our coefficient of drag by 10%. Combine that with uh, low drag chassis components, and we get 20% lower road load uh, compared to our competitors, a significant advantage. What this all adds up to is best in class uh, fuel economy. So for the four wheel drive, uh, the all wheel drive versions, uh, compared to the outgoing model, our best uh, versions, the 918s with idle stop, plus two miles per gallon city, plus two miles per gallon highway. And this also applies to the two-wheel drive versions uh, versus the outgoing model, uh, plus two miles per gallon in the city, plus two miles per gallon highway. And again, the numbers are right there um, on the chart. It's also in your packets. But it's not just fuel economy. As I mentioned, we don't want to just do one thing. We want to do acceleration and fuel economy. So if you look at the 0, 060 times across the bottom and the combined fuel economy along the uh, top axis, it stands way out here as best-in-class fuel economy combined with best-in-class acceleration. Our target for noise uh, was really inside the cabin. Uh, was thinking about conversational level noise. So this is a family vehicle. And when you're in the car with your family, uh, picking them up from school or something, that's a great time to have family time conversations. How was your day at school? Fine. And that's it. I mean, this is great. It's a great time to really connect. Then it's back to the smartphone, and let's move on. Take me to my friend's house. Um, so what we were trying to do to maximize those opportunities was to expand the application of acoustic glass from the windshield also onto the front doors. Uh, we also added thicker glass uh, back to the second doors. Um, we've improved the door ceiling with triple seals and foam barriers, improved the carpet insulation, ceiling throughout the vehicle. Uh, what we got from that on a cabin noise and a road noise graph uh, was best in class for, for MBH performance as well. I would uh, be remiss if I didn't talk about electronics and I would also be in trouble because Nicky Strzok spent a lot of time in the last four years working on electronics and he was available for any kind of discussions throughout the late rest of the day. Uh, let's start with the audio system. There's a standard seven speakers and a standard subwoofer. Go up to the premium audio version, there's 10 speakers and 540 watts of power. We have an all new 
eight inch uh, capacitive touch display audio system. It's an Android operating system, uh, but it does support seamless iPhone integration. We are now paired with Garmin Navi for our navigation system, which really gives us a lot of improvements in usability and graphics. We also have the latest Sirius XM features, and I want to tell you a little bit about them. Uh, the first one is called Tune Start. It's a DVR-like capability. Uh, what that does is from the beginning of turning on the car, your XM presets start to bubble from the beginning you start. So when you change to a different preset, uh, typically you go to that preset that's in the middle of the song. Uh, when it gets to that preset, that red box there, that's showing the amount of time that song has been playing. So maybe 34 seconds, maybe one minute, 57 seconds. If you hit skip back, it'll go to the beginning of that song. And you're like, I love this song, let's go back. If you've been driving the car for 30 minutes, as I said, every preset is buffering for 30 minutes. So you can skip back like 30 minutes of songs on that channel. So it's kind of a cool convenience function so you never miss the song that you want to hear. Then you pair that to the next thing called Tune Mix. Tune Mix allows you to combine some of your favorite XM channels onto one preset and have that be its own little mix, its own little uh, DJ mix. So what that's doing is, let's say you pick 80s at 8, 90s at 9, classic vinyl, uh, and you pick the channel you want to add, and you hold the preset where another channel is that you like, it'll ask you, would you like to combine or would you like to replace? If you hit replace, you're just moving that preset. If you hit combine, now they're together, and it'll rename that preset to be Mix 2. So you add another one, and it's called Mix 3, you add another one, it's called Mix 4. All of those channels are available. So it plays the song you're listening to. When the song ends, it'll jump randomly to one of those other channels. And whatever song is on that channel, it'll automatically go to the beginning of that song. So it just keeps playing your favorite songs from your favorite stations automatically. And it's just great. It's easy for, it's really great for long trips. The last one is called Sports Flash. That allows you to pick up to five of your favorite teams in NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, and college football. You program them in. When a highlight becomes available in an audio broadcast, uh, that pops up. And it'll give you a 30 second audio uh, clip of the highlight. If you choose, you just pick it and it plays it. Uh, and again, it's usually, almost always, it's Cubs win, Cubs win. You know how it is. They, they just win and win. Yeah, maybe next year. So anyway, it's just a cool feature. Uh, it's something to use. It's not going to be every day, but uh, you won't be missing some of 